Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. Not back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, so want to go ahead and react to something that happened all the way back on Friday night. Uh, and listen, I know that in the new world of, of the way we cover things, especially in sports, something that happened on Friday, reacting on Monday, that's like ancient history. Like you, you just don't do that anymore. But we had a very interesting result in a charity exhibition game on Friday night at Bud Walton Arena when Kansas played Arkansas. Didn't have time to react on Saturday with college football. Didn't have time to react on Sunday with the NFL, but figured we'd just jump in here really quick as Arkansas gets the 85-69 to win over the preseason number one team in the country. And before we dive in, let me do all the qualifiers, right? This was a preseason exhibition. Both teams were missing key players, and some guys were playing a little bit banged up. That certainly includes Kansas with the out there star center, Hunter Dickinson. But at the same time, while nobody's going to call this the greatest win in the history of Arkansas basketball, I'm here to tell you this. It doesn't mean nothing either, as I think this proves Arkansas is probably a better team than most people are giving them credit for. Arkansas, I believe, can compete with anybody in this sport, especially at full strength. And I believe, listen, Arkansas, they've been on the fringes of that first Final Four and 25, 30 years, whatever it's been. This team is absolutely good enough to get there, absolutely good enough to win when they get there. And I think there is a lot to be excited about after this victory, even if, again, we're being conservative and cautious in our optimism and excitement and frustration if you're a Kansas fan because it only is October. I'll tell you what, this is how uh, this is how I'm going to prove to you that uh, we're not going too crazy here. We're not even going to drop a big pig invasion today. We're not even going to drop a big pig invasion by the way, make sure you are at least following our Torres on the Hogs Twitter account. But let's go ahead and dive in because I thought there was a lot of reason to be excited if you're an Arkansas fan. And it was funny because John Calipari did his normal October, everybody take a deep breath, don't get too high, too low speech before this game. But there was a lot to be excited about in terms of the positives in this 85-69 to 69 win. First thing, I'm just going to do it right now. I am going to take the L on Boogie Flan, okay? So I always thought Boogie Flan was going to be good. Boogie Flan, freshman guard out of New York City, committed to Cal at Kentucky, follows him to Arkansas, whatever. I thought Boogie Flan was going to be really good. Don't Make no mistake about that. But it was even as recent as probably Friday before the game. I went on halftime with Phil Elson and uh, Matt Jones and was talking about this team, and I, I even dropped the, this is the first time that Cal is not going to have to rely on freshmen because of all the veterans, Jonas Adu, Nelly Davis, DJ Wagner, Adu Thiero, et cetera. Uh, yeah, I was wrong because Cal's going to have to rely on Boogie Flade because Boogie Flade is probably the best player on this team, okay? As a true freshman, first big-time college experience. And remember, he's not uh, playing a, a, a D3 team, an NIA, NAIA team, a, a lousy, uh, you know, low major team. This is against the Kansas freaking Jayhawks. And even if you want to argue Kansas is missing guys, uh, Boogie Flynn was going up against a 60 year senior in Dewan Harris Jr., who has won a national championship as a starter at Kansas. Okay. And Boogie Flynn was the best player on the floor 22 points. The offensive repertoire to me was so impressive. We knew he was quick. We knew he could get to the rim. We knew he could finish at the rim. But some of those mid range jumpers, that quick trigger, that kind of quick, you know, kind of kept quick catch and shoot. I was just impressed at how far along offensively he is. And then defensively, he just causes absolute chaos. Kansas committed 17 turnovers in this game. Boogie Fland himself had six turnovers, so or, or, or turno or six steals, excuse me, turnovers forced, I should say. And so you look at the impact that that guy had on the floor on both ends. The couple highlight plays, you know, he picked Dewan Harris's pocket for an and one right before halftime. Uh, threw the ball off the backboard to Trevin Brazil. Goodness gracious. This kid is good, and like I said, I said before this game, this might be a year where Cal doesn't have to rely on freshmen, but he is the best player probably on this team, and he is going to be elite. This this wasn't one like, oh, he just had a good game, and you know by by mid December he'll be you know the seventh. No, 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 no. that guy's really good. 
Beyond that, a couple other positive takeaways from this game from the Arkansas perspective. Um, Got to say, our guy, uh, DJ Wagner, former Kentucky. Listen, I'll say this for DJ. DJ was awesome. We had him on the show last week. And I thought it, one thing that I give him a ton of credit for, I kind of talked to him about last year kind of playing through injuries, and he didn't use that as an excuse. But I bring it up to very simply say this is that if you followed Kentucky at all, and specifically DJ Wagner, and I've said it all offseason, Kentucky, the best version of Kentucky all season long, was with a fully healthy DJ Wagner. And when he was fully healthy, he was one of the best guards in the SEC and in college basketball. And this is what tells you how good he was last year, is that it was considered to be a disappointing year, and he struggled late and still averaged just under 10 points and about three assists per game as a true freshman in the toughest SEC ever. And again, go back to some of those early games. Go back to the win at Florida early in the year. Go back to the win against North Carolina on a neutral court. He was as good as any player on the floor. North Carolina ended up as a number one seed, uh, winning the ACC regular season title. Florida was obviously a very good team. DJ Wagner was the best player on the floor in those games, the best guard in those games. And so I bring it up because that version of DJ Wagner is who we got on Friday night. Finished the game with a game-high 24 points. Boogie Flam was probably the best player on the floor because of the defensive impact. But DJ Wagner looks so good, and he looks so comfortable and so confident, beating people off the dribble, getting to the rim, finishing at the rim, a very efficient 8 of 12 from the field, and actually was probably one of the few Razorbacks that actually looked good from behind the three-point line, hitting 2 of 4. He also added, in addition, 4 assists. I thought it was as good as he's looked since probably early last season. And I believe if he can stay healthy, that is a guy that is an all-SEC type player. Really quickly, last kind of guy that really popped, and it's an obvious one, Zvonavir Visic, Big Z. Hello! He was excellent on Friday night. And Big Z is another one. I think because of everything that happened this offseason, we forget the whole story on Big Z. And even on the broadcast, and listen, I love Jimmy Dykes. Great at what he does. Love Seth Greenberg. Great at what he does. This is not a criticism. But they talked a lot about the battle with the NCAA last year for Big Z. It was so much more than that, okay? And they talked about that on the broadcast. Remember, Big Z had one of the wildest timelines I've ever seen. He didn't even commit to Kentucky until last August. So just think about that. Most teams get their players back on campus for summer workouts in like late May, early June, right after Memorial Day for summer workouts, okay? So uh, Big Z doesn't even get get uh doesn't even commit until august then there was the issue not only with the ncaa but with kentucky's admissions he didn't even come to the united states until about october he's battling his school which at first wouldn't admit him then they admitted him then he's dealing with the ncaa people forget this he went home around christmas time and i forget if it was early december late december whatever and there was real talk like he's not coming back. Like, like he doesn't think his people don't know if he's going to get eligible. They don't want to waste the whole year having him sit around and not play. There was talk that he wasn't going to get back. So it wasn't only with Big Z that he didn't play until February. It was that like we didn't know really what we, we didn't even know if he was going to come back to the United States after Christmas break because of all the craziness with the NCA. So commits in August, comes over, goes back, comes back, gets himself into game shape, plays in February. And we certainly, he played great that first game against Georgia, had a couple other big games. But I think Friday we saw what this guy can be at full strength. Seven foot two, uh, control just so much of the game from the perspective of uh, 18 points, six boards, which was a team high, five assists as a seven foot two playmaker, one block, uh, made two threes. I think he took at least one that probably is going to make Cal go a little bit grayer. But it doesn't change the fact that this kid is so talented, was so good, and I think we are just starting to scratch the surface of who he can be. And I think if he plays like that and we'll see how he fits with Jonas Adu, I mean, he could be one of the best big men in the SEC this season with a full offseason, with a full uh, you know, summer of workouts and, and weight training and meal planning and all that stuff. I think the stat they dropped on the broadcast was he's gained about 20 pounds since the end of last year. And I think you could tell. So if you're an Arkansas fan, listen, you just beat the number one team in the country. There is reason for excitement. And here's the other thing. Think about what you did not have on, on Friday night. Now, if you want to argue that Kansas was down a couple guys as well, they were certainly down Hunter Dickinson, All-American, no doubt about it. But remember, 
Arkansas was down its best player as well, Jonas Adu, an all-SEC big man that played at Tennessee last year and helped Tennessee get to an Elite Eight. So don't tell me that it was, all you know, Arkansas was at full strength playing like it's February and Kansas was treating it like it was a midsummer workout. No, 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 no. There were certainly both te- uh, uh, guys on both teams that were less than 100%, guys that didn't play. The rules were a little bit funky. They played quarters. I get all that. But at the same time, just you can't say that, you know, Arkansas had this huge advantage because remember, no Jonas Adu. And I think the other thing that stood out was Nelly Davis clearly is not at 100%. He has not been practicing uh, this offseason or uh, the last couple of weeks. I think it's been a risk that he's been dealing with. He only finished the game with five total points, two of six shooting. But there's another level for him to go to. You're going to get back Jonas Adu. And I think there's a lot of reason for excitement. Now, obviously, there's things you got to clean up. Didn't shoot the ball great from three. I think that to me is the big thing. You got to shoot better than six of 24. But I think part of it, again, jo- uh, uh, Janelle Davis, Nellie Davis was, was one of. Uh, you know, coming into the year, one of your best three-point shooters on paper and a guy that has been a consistently good three-point shooter throughout most of his college career. And so this was a guy that was not at 100%, uh, obviously did not play very well on on uh, on Friday, but we didn't see the best version of him a year after he hit almost 42% from three a season ago at Florida Atlantic. So I think there's a lot of reason for excitement. Obviously, if you're a Kansas fan that's stumbling across this video, no reason to panic. You're going to be just fine. I believe in Bill Self. I think more importantly, you were missing guys. You, you were missing Hunter Dickinson. Um, you know, the guards, listen, AJ Store is probably your best wing player, but Shaquille Moore is going to make a difference, and, and, and Rylan Griffin's a three-point shooter. But if you're an Arkansas fan, you got to be excited. You looked good. You were at home against the number one team in the country, and I'm sorry. But if you want to use the excuse that Kansas was missing guys, Arkansas was as well. Hog fans, enjoy this one. I know there's another exhibition before the season starts. The season is coming soon, though, and I just go back to what I said to lead this video. You don't want to make too much out of it. For the last time, we know both teams were missing guys, but man, oh man, did you look good. And I think as Nellie Davis gets healthy, as Jonas Adu gets healthy, there's another level for this team to get to. Get excited, Razorback fans. I think it's going to be a fun, fun, fun season ahead. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Make sure to subscribe to the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. New clips, new videos going up every day. We go live every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Probably some more charity exhibition stuff in the coming days. Um, And yeah, we're rocking and rolling. Fun time of year, man. College football is kind of really full speed ahead. College basketball, the NFL. It's a fun time. Make sure you're subscribed. Also, if you're an Arkansas fan, follow Torres 